now. Thomas Hearns is an open book for Ray Leonard. Backs up against the ropes. This is one of the most unusual calls by a referee in the history of the sport. The first loss. A tremendous victory. Leonard fighting off the ropes. It happened. It happened. Number cut by Douglas. Down goes to his home Right hand shot. So I'm Jim Lampley. Welcome to this look back at the stories behind Hagler Leonard, one of the most memorable fights in 30 years of boxing on HBO. Life, we're fond of saying, is unfair. And even unfairer it sometimes seems in the game of fame and fortune. Why is it some great fighters become stars and others, perhaps equally great, are largely ignored in the world beyond the ropes? Never did a prize fight more graphically underline this inequity than in 1987 when Ray Leonard made his most memorable comeback against marvelous Marvin Hagler. Today, people still will argue who won the fight. I don't care who you're with, a Hagler and Leonard fight comes up, it's the conversation for the night. How do you like it? How do you like it? I know I won the fight. He believes he won the fight. Everyone says, you know, Hagler, I picked you. <laughs> I want to know. I says, how did I lose this fight then? Both fighters think they won the fight. The decision announced on April 6, 1987, assured one man's ascent to greatness, confirming the unfortunate fate of another. But for Sugar Ray Leonard and marvelous Marvin Hagler, the bad blood goes back to the beginning of a long road of disparity. Their conflicting journeys date back to the amateurs, as the show-stealing Leonard embarked upon the golden road the 1976 Olympic Games. Hagler, an amateur champion eager for a payday, turned professional only to be humbled with $50 fights in obscure arenas. Nobody ever thought of Marvin Hagler as a potential champion. I mean, probably not for the first five or six years of his career. Ray Leonard, coming out of the Olympic Games, was groomed to be a champion. There was no question about it. He was the golden boy. Ray wins the gold medal, and he's America's hero, and he gets $40,000 for his first fight. Marvin made 50 bucks. This guy makes $40,000, he's on CBS, and Hagler's looking saying, you know, what about me? The skids were greased for Ray, and Marvin, what did he have nothing? All he was was this tough, working class, take your lunch pail to work, blue collar, tough guy fighter from Rocky Marciano's hometown of Brockton, Massachusetts. I think uh, Marvin Hagler resented the fact that he had to slog the hard road to get recognition. He had to fight 40 or 50 fights before people would agree that he was a pretty good fighter. Well, I never had nothing easy in my life in the boxing game. Always had to keep jumping hurdles after another hurdle, or always another hurdle. After six long years and 49 professional fights, an embittered Hagler was desperate for a shot at the title. This is a feature attraction of the afternoon. But to Hagler's dismay, his first shot came on the undercard of Sugar Ray Leonard's first welterweight championship bout in 1979. Introducing the challenger, marvelous Marvin Hagler. And the inequity of Leonard's million dollar paycheck and Hagler's $40,000 purse continued to fuel the envy of a brawler fighting for respect. Rito stunned by a Hagler right. Yet despite a damaging performance requiring multiple stitches in Vito Antefermo's face, Hagler's dream of becoming middleweight champion fell short. The decision is a draw. It's a draw. Into a promo is still. Vito retains the title. Good Lord, they called it a draw. A very popular sugar ring winner. Later that night, Leonard's impressive victory over Wilfredo Benitez only enhanced the celebrity of an already adored star. Hagler's hard road to the title finally ended a year later in London, England, with a gory three-round TKO of Britain's own Alan Minter. But an enraged arena robbed the new champion of his long-drawn moment to shine. And Hagler's on his knees, acclaiming his victory. Some people are throwing beer cans, one's landed on me. 
beer cans are being hurled in all over the ring. There's a fight. That's one of the things that disappointed Marvin because he didn't get to walk around the ring and have the fans show him their approval. Didn't happen. Now determined to stay on top, Hagler unleashed an endless string of consecutive knockouts, each one concluding in the celebration of his beloved belt. To be middleweight champion of the world meant everything to Marvin Hagler. That was what, what it was always all about for him. It was his announcement to the world that he was somebody and meant something. In the meantime, America's sweetheart, Sugar Ray Leonard, danced down a celebrated road of psychological savvy, avenging his only professional loss by frustrating the great Roberto Duran into quitting. Then dazzling fans with a potent encore against the hitman, Thomas Hearns. And that's all. It's over. And Ray Leonard is the undisputed welterweight champion of the world against the By 1981, the undisputed king of boxing was exceeding the purses of heavyweights and basking in the affection of infinite fans. Wow, was that the shit? No, that's just my dad. <laughs> but a fight between boxing's contrasting champions now seemed imminent. It was obvious that, you know, they had to get together. You had Sugar Ray, the pretty boy, the ABC kid, you know, the flurry, the flash, the, you know, the sizzle. And you got Marvin, you know, Marvin just plugging along, you know, mean, furious, leaving carnage behind him. Ray wanted to walk down the street and people say, there's Ray Leonard, he's the greatest fighter that ever lived. And the way he could get there was by beating Marvin Hagler, the most menacing man within his realm. And it became an obsession with him, I think. It was interrupted, this obsession. It was interrupted by the detached retina. The discovery of Leonard's detached retina in June of 82 was initially considered a career-ending eye injury. But with advanced medical treatment, doctors gave Leonard the green light to continue fighting. But the pull of public opinion proved stronger than medicine. I was 25 years old. I didn't want to quit, but because of who I was, there was mass hysteria that I was willing to risk my eyesight. He said, man, you gotta be crazy. You gotta be stupid. Come on, we're gonna fight again. You know, you can go blind. You got enough money, you got a nice family, give it up. If Ray Leonard does decide that's enough, I've had it. I'm not gonna have you a can't go in do my that. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta make some of that money. I'm tired of people telling me how generous he is and how good friends we go. If I'm such a good friend, give me that big payday then. That's what we want. We want to show real artists and everything else out there, and I believe that it's us that can do it. All right. I like that. Mike, trying to sign me up. <laughs> With Hagler's hopes running high, Leonard invited Muhammad Ali, Howard Cosell, and 10,000 other friends and fans to a gala ceremony in Baltimore's Civic Center. For Hagler's camp, the personal request of their presence could only mean one thing. We figured that he invited us down to make the official announcement to the world that he was going to challenge uh, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. And as I stand here, in one second, I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do. And we sat there with that anticipation as Leonard led us down the primrose path. To Marvin Hagler, a fight with this great man, this great champion, could be one of the greatest fights in the history of boxing. And when we got to the end of the primrose path, he cut off our head. But unfortunately, it'll never happen. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank you. It was like a, just a backhander across the face to Marvin. You fool. You fool. You, you came all the way down here thinking I was going to give you this. There it is. Sugar Ray Leonard has retired. And God bless him, he had nothing more ever to prove. Marvin never, ever forgave him for that. To this day, you say Ray Leonard and you duck if you're with Marvin Hagler. Would you have liked to fought him? Sure. You know, that's the opportunity that I'm going to miss, but I believe he'll be back. Though Leonard's life continued ringside, commentating on the accolades of others didn't sit well for a champion still in his prime. Well, we talk about just how marvelous, marvelous Marvin Hagler was tonight, Ray. Ray is a guy who needs the spotlight. He's got to have the spotlight. I said, you know what, this is not fair, you know, because I wanted to fight Marvin Hagler, and I figured that my, my legacy was cut short. Ray wanted to fight, and if he wasn't in the ring, if he wasn't fighting, if he wasn't training for a fight, he, Ray was not happy. Hey, guys, I'm back. 
Leonard's short-lived return in 1984 against an unranked journeyman named Kevin Howard had Hagler on hand to witness the first knockdown of Leonard's career. And a right hand from Kevin Howard put Sugar Ray Leonard right on the seat of his pants. Leonard rallied quickly to stop Howard in the ninth, but the damage to his pride appeared career-ending. It's just not there. I have retired for good. Leonard's departure for the second time finally left room for a marvelous main event, and 1985's epic three-round war against Thomas Hearns at long last cemented Hagler's coveted place in the spotlight. Oh, this one is history. Marvin Hagler, a tremendous victory. That was really his coming out party, and, and that's what made him a superstar. One should grab oneself one of these red guard sports sticks because one would hate to be considered malodorous by one's chums. Now, wouldn't one? Once Marvin started to get national commercials and these kind of things that put him at that Ray Leonard level, you know, then you knew that he had broken through and he was going to stay on top. My God, Tim, what punishment this Mugabe's taken, and he's still there. Reveling in the twilight of his career, Hagler's 12th consecutive title defense came in 1986 at the demise of John the Beast Mugabe. But while most witnessed a raging battle, one man sitting ringside saw only opportunity. It was one of the most brutal, physically exhausting, physically damaging fights I have ever seen. He's got him hurt. He's got him hurt. Mugabe finally goes down. Eleventh round, Marvin drops Mugabe. And Mugabe sat up like, the hell with this. You know, I'm not getting up. You know, I, I can't beat the man. And when the ref said 10, Ray stood up, he looked at me and said, I can beat him, I'm going to fight him. People ask me, so you coming back? I said, no, I'm not coming back. But if Marvin Hagler called me, I'd, do, I'd cons consider something like that. Ray, then wait I'm a minute. Not, I'm not saying, no, JB, listen, we're talking here. I'm not saying I'm coming back. I said, if he should call me, it's something I could, could really consider. I was home watching TV. They said, Sugar Ray Leonard will be fighting Marvin Hagler. I said, what? You may or may not have heard that uh, Mr. Leonard to my left has said that he will come out of retirement to fight Marvin Hagler if Marvin Hagler will fight him. I called my brother. I said, Ray, is that true? He said, yeah. I said, well, uh, who going to be the warmer guy? He said, I ain't got no warmer fight. I'm going straight to him. But the now 32-year-old Hagler wasn't as anxious as before. Undefeated for 11 years and just two victories short of matching the record 14 middleweight title defenses, the veteran champion took his turn to play games. And now there's talk uh, that you might not well, fight him. Is that, <clears throat> is that true? Well, you know, right now, it's really hitting a lot of press. I think basically just has an ego. He's on an ego trip or something. Or yeah. A little jealousy. Or he's missing the limelight a little bit. But uh, the way that I feel about it, I'm just going to sit back and I'm just going to lick my chops. <laughs> like that. And just, and just wait. Marvin, it took a long time to convince him to take the fight. He didn't need the fight. He could retire. But such was the power of Ray Leonard that once he started banging the drum, everyone was calling out Marvin Hagley. Aren't you going to fight him? The guy's been retired for all these years. you got to fight him. Good evening, my father. So Marvin, let's fight him, beat him, and go off into the sunset. After that, I really would have said, OK, I achieved everything that I wanted in this boxing life, and now I can retire and live happily ever lasting. What a great story, you know. That's what I was hoping for. Ain't nothing else to it! To most boxing experts, Hagler's fairy tale ending seems secure against a 30-year-old ring-rusted Leonard in his first ever fight as a middleweight. I don't care how good somebody is, it is almost impossible to conceive of somebody coming back at this level after a virtual five year and 50 day layoff and fighting at a world championship level. And it was almost like, uh, you know, I go into a hanging and people were thinking, Ray Leonard's not gonna win this fight and, you know, we're just watching an execution here. You know? Marvin was ferocious and people knew it. And now Sugar Ray was gonna find out. Sugar Ray Leonard making his way out of the dressing room and toward the ring. What must be going through this man's mind? The march to the ring with Ray was, we realized it was something special going to happen here tonight. You, you, you could feel it. The focus naturally is on Ray because he is the question mark. He is the mystery. Ray had said, there's a couple of things I want you to do during the course of the fight. He said, um, I want you to say dip and slide. He said, then I want you to let me know when it's 30 seconds. So he yelled 30 seconds before each round ends. 
because I was still around by throwing a lot of punches. It wasn't until the fighters were actually seen and the ring walk started that there was this just this palpable burst of energy that filled the arena. This is the main event of the night. You couldn't help it. You were caught up in the emotion of this fight, and it just took you right with it all the way up into the ring. Sugar, Ray, Leonard, Marvelous, Marvin, Hitler. I mean, it was dramatic. The most dramatic I could ever remember in any fight. You really have the feeling the first round is going to tell an awful lot of the story of this fight. In the first round, Marvin comes out orthodox. Marvin's a southpaw. You know, it's like trick time. I remember sitting there thinking, what on earth are you doing? Leonard is beating Hagler to the punch. Are you kidding me? But it's Marvin Hagler fighting Ray Leonard's fight. I realized then that he was just as tight and as scared as I was. Where was the Marvin Hagler that came out of the ring like a whirling dervish and absolutely, utterly destroyed Thomas Hurts? Where was he? Marvin Hagler was moving around. He was boxing with Sugar Ray Leonard and losing the rounds. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. The one thing that is very apparent now is that Leonard is the more confident fighter. I think the way Hagler came out against Leonard was a false attempt to show that I don't even have to box you in my conventional way to beat you. On my card, Barry, Leonard won the first two rounds. 30 seconds before the bell would end, all he'd done that was say 30 seconds, and I would flurry and win that round. 30! It worked like a charm. 30 seconds, boom, rounds over. Put that one in the back. Ding, round two's in the books. Ding, round three's in the books. Harold Letterman, how do you score the fight? Larry, I've got all three rounds for Sugar Ray Leonard. Take this sucker, he'll go for it. Right. Ray Leonard's punches in that fight were louder. Wasn't it that, that they were any more effective than Marvin Hagler's punches? In fact, they absolutely weren't. Yes, 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 yes. But he, they came in bunches. They were pretty flashy. They were easy to see. They were good punches. They weren't just pity patter punches. They were good, solid punches. A few round stealing flurries is what he's trying to do. You can't win the fight with pitter patter. Marvin was the aggressor, and I mean, that's what more or less what I scored on. Marvin's doing his thing. He's pursuing Sugar Ray, and he's stalking him and hunting him down, and he's beating him up. A good right. Very Ray good right. Seemed hurt. Big right hand by Marvin Hacker. And now Hacker chases Leonard. And then Leonard would pop in, do his little dance and flurry and this and that. I'm a fighter, you know, and that's that's what I've always been. Hacker just continues to press Sugar Ray Leonard. But uh, this guy was, you know, just like a little rabbit, man. I mean, <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Ray Leonard wanted the bigger ring here. He got his wish, and he's using all of it. If you want to be the champion, if you want to take my title, I think you got to come and take it. This is what Hagler wants. He wants a war. All through the fight, you could see them talking. Hagler was saying to him, come on, bitch. And he was calling him a wuss. He was calling him a sissy. He said, Stop and fight me like a man, you little bitch. Fight me like a man, you little bitch. And I said, no. They don't fight nobody slugging. He's a mover, a boxer, a chess player. To me, he fought like still back in the Olympic days with the pitter patter thing or running around and whatever. And I didn't feel as though he fought me like a champion. And Leonard with his hands at his side, really taunting Hagler. Hit him in the ass, you know, spin him around. Do a little flurry, move around, dance, raise your hand. You know, the purist looked at that and said, ah, oh, that's garbage. And now Hagler mocking Leonard. But meanwhile, what is it doing to this guy's head? Smiling at him and just essentially saying, come on. And now Hagler's getting angry. It was sickening. You know, I'm watching him fight, and he's out there, you know, sticking his head out, shuffling his feet, and I'm like, this is why I don't like him. It worked for what it was. It's kind of a little humor, if you will. You don't make a mockery out of the sport. Ray, please box. Deep breath. Give me another one. How do you feel, man? That's what you're going to brawl this guy, keep the pressure on him, taking his legs away from right now. The ninth round was probably the best round. I said, here we go. We're going we're gonna to finally get to Ray and, uh, and put him away. Ray Leonard is hurt in the corner. Leonard's 
left hand down at his side. Hagler peppering him. Calls in the little fella. Bop, boop, bop, boop, bop, bam, bam, boom. Backs Marvin up. And now it's Hagler who backs off. Hagler knew then he had to take Ray out sooner or later to win the fight. Ray Leonard's ability to take the punches from Hagler is astonishing, really. No, I think he was dying in there. Leonard just took a deep breath and dropped his arms. Now, whether that was a ploy, we'll find out here. 15 seconds left, round nine. It seemed like every time when I had him going, the bell would ring. There was almost an audible sigh. Oh, Blind Ray survived. Oh, Blind Ray survived. He was winning just because he wasn't losing. And how far will Ray Leonard's legs take him? 15 seconds left, round 10. I have it an even fight. But you must understand that at this point in the fight, everyone had Ray knocked out. 30 seconds, 11th round. To me, at that point in the fight, the judges stopped watching the fight and stopped watching Ray. Hard to know how this fight will be scored, but it's closer than Marvin Hagler thought it would be going into this last round. Deep run! We only got three minutes! Yeah! Come on, baby! We got three minutes! One more round, the fight's over! You better! New champ! The 12th round of that fight was to me a very symbolic round. Hagler cornered him every once in a while, would get him on the ropes, but miraculously, just when it seemed he might have Leonard in trouble. Ray would suddenly flurry out of it. But I never saw the crowd turn as much as it turned in that fight. The crowd chanting Sugar Ray! I mean, people that didn't want to be rooting for Ray Leonard were rooting for Ray Leonard at the end. Sugar Ray Leonard captured the audience, captured the judges, he had captured everybody. Off the ropes! Leonard fighting off the ropes! The crowd just rose to its feet thunderously saying, this is the real deal. Sugar Ray Leonard showed up for the fight. How do you like it? How do you like it? Both fighters think they won the fight. What I saw in Marvin Hagler, which told me that he kind of knew that I won the fight, was when, when the bell sounded, he, was, he just kind of danced. Marvin doesn't dance. I was all happy, man. I was like, just getting down, you know, I still had so much energy still in me. It was a great fight on both sides, regardless of who wins it. So I went towards him, I, I said, I kissed him on the cheek, I said, man, you're still a champ to me, you're still a champ to me. And Leonard had told me himself inside the ring, you know, that you beat me, you know, but yet the man still won a minute to the world. I never told him he won the fight. Even if he did, if I thought he did win a fight, I wouldn't say that to him. Split decision. I thought Marvin won the fight. But when I heard him say split decision, my heart sunk and I said, they're going to steal it. The winner by a split decision and new middleweight champion of the world, Sugar Ray Leonard. Marvin thought that it had been stolen from him because he wasn't as glamorous as Sugar Ray Leonard, as beloved as Sugar Ray Leonard. And Hagler just finally just went like that. And that was kind of my last recollection of him in the ring, total disgust for the sport that made him marvelous. He told me once that he never put on another pair of gloves in a gym or anywhere else after that fight. Me to me is still a champion. I didn't want the belt, I just want to beat him. I thank him as Marvin Hagler, and thank you. I thought it was good for boxing, Marvin said. But uh, they got six C in my face, and they gave it to the golden boy. I proved that I was the true champion. He didn't knock me down, didn't hurt me at all. Come on. I just can't believe it. Uh. Thank you, Marvin. Okay. Marvin Hagler could have lost to anyone else. And he would have dealt with it. But for him to have lost to me, of all people, I think but for the Hagler fight, Ray Leonard might be under the category of what might have been. It's the greatest comeback I think I've ever seen. Whether you think he won or lost, it was one of the transcendent performances in the history of that sport, no question about it. When I look at the fight, I mean, I think uh, I threw about three TVs out every time because I don't see what everybody sees. This man never beat me. 
The Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight is a fight that people are going to talk about forever. But there's not going to ever be an answer. Did he win the fight? Yeah, he won the fight. Did Marvin Hagler won the fight? Yeah, he won the fight. But to be honest with you, every time I see that fight, it gets closer and closer and closer. Hagler was so frustrated by the decision and by obstacles to a potential rematch that he did something no other fighter has done. He walked away from another eight-figure payday and moved to Italy never to fight again. Leonard kept fighting off and on for ten more years, but never again showed the style that earned him his most controversial and amazing victory. Thanks for watching The Tale of Hagler Leonard. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions.